Hi, this is Phil Murphy, and welcome to How Hard Can It Be? Now, what's that got to do with a boat? That's fiberglass, and that is steel. Shall we go and have a look? Come on. Acting like a worker. As you can see, we've got two yellow jackets up there. They're hello. not painting the boat. Say hello, hello. guys. Hello, boys. Hello, Holder. How are we doing? <laughs> there you go. So, answers in the comments what you think they're up to. So, we'll leave it at that for now and we'll have a look later when they start putting things together. See you later. Well, hang on, we're guest stars today. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. What's your name then? Russell John. There you go, Russell. <laughs> right, get a move on with it. Oh, we sorry. haven't got all day. Sorry. We shall get a move on. <laughs> All right, let's get that bugger up there. <laughs> you might have to keep it with this bill down here. So we can get the need to get tight to boat, really, don't we? Tight to boat? Tight to boat. Oh, you get tight to boat? Ah, right, you right. shove them in. Yeah, I think it's nothing I'm shoving. Oh, well, we'll soon hear it. <laughs> so, uh, right, really? Sit it in the thing. Right. Oh, I'm just thinking. Yeah, go ahead. Does it want to come round? Oh, go on. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I'm more thinking. Does it want to come right to the end of your basket, really? Down the light. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look, the light ends at the end of your head now. Right. So if it comes to the end of the basket. Yeah, okay. But I'm thinking. It has to be further that way, isn't it? Yeah, but if it comes this end. way, and that end goes that way a bit, right like. You know what I mean? Then you're not pushing me off the ball. You've got it a minute, Billy. One wire on it, but there's only one wire. Mm. I don't know what that's for. Only one wire. I mean, obviously, it holds the lights up, but I didn't know it was there. Uh, <laughs> do you want me to give you a boat source? Huh? I mean, I'll need. Yeah? How are you? Alright, come on. 
Bloody hell! What's wrong with you, man? Well, where the bloody hell have you been for 18 months? Waiting to let you out of our seat. What's that doing there? Oh, we're on. What? You're filming? Oh, I forgot what. Hi, everybody! <laughs> 18 months later, Phil Murphy, a Nauticus 27 foot, in the dark. Shall we go and have a look at it? Come on. Well, can't believe you're here and he's here and I'll talk to him later. 18 months in here in the dark, nothing to eat. Can Can't you not be. tell? <laughs> Lost a lot of weight, <laughs> Covid, <laughs> everything. Anyway, first of all, yes we're back, hopefully fingers crossed, we're going to be back doing what we were supposed to be doing in episode 29. There's going to be a mishmash of bits and bats because last time 18 months ago we started episode 30 but unfortunately with the lockdown and everything else that went on of course we couldn't continue so you're going to see a bit of that and you're going to see a new bit as well so from the past if i remember rightly we're supposed to be doing that window up there in fact those winds that windscreen up there so that's what we're going to concentrate on but of course first i suppose i better get rid of well I better move these two, hadn't I? What do you think? Because I ain't gonna give it, I'm not gonna get up there, am I, without those there? So, let's get rid of the, I hope it starts. Let's get rid of the midget. Shall we? Let's get rid of the boxes. I'll tell you what, she's looking a bit sad. Right, let's just check, see if we've got Come, that's all right, that's okay. Right, fingers crossed. The choke, I know from memory, isn't connected, so this will be fun. Let's see if we've got a battery. Life in a, yeah, we've got a battery. We've got a battery light. Come on, girl. Come on, let's see if we start. Petrol pump's going, that's a good sign. Fuel in, here we go. She's got more life in her than me.
that'll do. It's got good oil pressure. Anyway, we're not here about a car, are we? We're here about a boat. Oh God, I've got to get out of this thing now. Bloody hell. There we go. Right. Right, let's get on deck and let's see what we're doing. Okay, so we're back on board. So this is basically just a quick recap and the reason why I'm doing it for two reasons. One is that I'm just recapping with yourself, but I'm also recapping for me because I, this is literally my first day back at the boat and obviously with all the troubles that I've had in the way of being in hospital and uh, whatever, uh, I've sort of forgot where I was at. So anyway, I can see that I've lined everything up at the moment, which is good because I know that the bolts fit through each bracket there, which is fine. I've got to get these angles right because if I don't, then it's going to be a chain reaction with the canopy that goes up and gets bolted to the rest of the boat at a later date. So if I don't get this right, then it's going to screw everything up uh, going that way. So the object of this exercise is I've got to complete this. So I've got, obviously I've taped everything up and I'm, I'm liking the angles that everything is at. I've obviously marked these off. So I know that this has got to be do it. I can also say that I need to make a bracket to fit that hole there. So this stops this from moving around this, this bit here and also that one over there. So there's not much really I need to, I need to do fabrication wise with this window. Cosmetically it needs sorting, that's fine. But to get it structurally right, I think there's not much work to do and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to take it all to bits and I'm gonna start work on it. And you're going to get to see, not all of it because it's boring, because there'll be a bit of sanding and a bit of this, bit of that. But aesthetically, you're going to see me connect it all together and then we'll then be able to fit it. And then we'll put this one to bed and then we'll move on to the other little bits that have to go on before we can do this bit underneath. Because without those, we can't fit that underneath there. So there we go. So let's move on. Right, windows, small windows, always been a trouble, but now we've got to get on with them. So, as you know before, many, many episodes before, that's what I ended up with. These stuck together, they're actually pretty strong actually, but I don't like, I filled, I filled everywhere in and I know what they look like when they're straight because I've done the two front sections that are on the wind, uh, are on the boat at the moment. But these are in worse state. So I thought in my mind, I know I've got some aluminium strips. I wonder if I can reface these windows and make them look better and also straight, uh, strengthen them. So I have started cutting out pieces of aluminium and I went to my local DIY store and I took one of these windows and they've got lots of various thicknesses and depths of aluminium pieces and I chose them according. Now yours obviously will be probably different to mine but I would suggest you took it with you and just see what comes up. Anyway so what I am doing is, I think I've got a piece here. What's that? Number two, I've written on here somewhere. That's number three, it's made this side, the front side. So I've already cut two pieces, which is number one, because obviously I have had to uh, mark them. So then I know where everything is. And that, I will lift it up that is the effect I will have. So it strengthens it and it also flattens everything off. So when I come to paint them, they're gonna look pretty good, I think. And I know they're gonna look pretty good because here's one fresh out of the oven. 
So there we are. That's what it looked like. Now I've used a two. Um, just zoom in on that a bit, Phil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I've used uh, a metal glue. It's, I think it's a, a resin. I will show you at the, uh, at the after I finish doing what I'm doing. I'll show you the packet that I used. But anything that's um, a, a resin type will uh, stick it quite comfortably. And I used some small um, grips to keep them into position. And I left it 24 hours. I actually did them at home. It was easy enough to do them there. Uh, and I've ended up with an exceptionally strong, sturdy window. As you can see, I've done that side as well. Those two areas. Not so sure what I'm going to do with these yet. I think I might be okay with those because obviously I've got to connect. I've got to attach this to the main window. So. I'll decide what I'm going to do with that when I get to that stage. But other than that, I'm going to surface these other, uh, this other side. This is the left-hand side, and I'm going to resurface the right-hand side. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I've cut that one. So I've got the two fronts, and I've written the two fronts on there, so that's good. This one... I've used tape actually to uh, guide me because these angles aren't actually, you, you couldn't, use, well I suppose you could use a set square or, or whatever, an angled uh, measurement thing, but I found that using tape is equally as good. Uh, so basically what I did was, which is that one, uh, got that many pieces, that's the back. So that one is, that one's that one there. I don't know whether that picks it up there. And then this piece is that way. So I use the tape just to get a guide on, on the line, which is that line there. So I'm gonna cut along that side and I'm gonna cut along that side and hopefully that will drop into place. Now I've used that one as the longest one and it goes over the existing joints, which is the key to really strengthen it as I found with the one that I've done. So I'm going to make sure I don't cut the wrong side. So it's that side I need to cut. I found using a hacksaw just as good. And then I finish the uh, the end off with a file because it's only a soft metal when all said and done. Finish it off. That's that side done. I know that that one is the smallest one to cut. So I shall do the same with that one. Off it. So I just need to clean that edge up. It's that way. 
There we go. So, if I lift that up, I can't lift it up. <laughs> but you get the picture. That. So obviously, I'll go. I'll do this one. Get all three sides. I've already done the front, and then we'll go on to uh, the glue side of it. So I'll see you in a minute. You don't need to know about that one, do you? No, you don't. Right, all chopped up, pieces of aluminium, all cut, ready. Should do a bit of that. All ready to be epoxied into position. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use this Araldite, it's called, and what I like about this one is it's got a work time of 90 minutes so I can be fiddling around I can get it all sorted I can I can use it for 90 minutes uh, it's got a handling time of eight hours and it's got a full cure time of, of uh, 14 hours so that's I don't know whether whichever country uh, who's watching I don't know whether it's possible to get that but it's called Arald Araldite and it is a adhesive it's an adhesive for metals uh, and everything else that you need uh, for it to be strong. And it is strong because I know because we've already done a window. So there we go. I'm sure any other type will work, but I've just got this one and uh, it was actually quite reasonable. I think it was about three or four ninety nine for, uh, for two tubes. So two tubes, equal parts. I'm going to mix it now. Where's my little doofer? So that's what I'm going to do now. Squeeze it from the bottom. That should be enough of that one. Just kink it so it goes back in the tube, and then another equal quantity. Two, three. I normally count the swirls, it gives me a rough idea on quantity. And then, of course, we just mix it together. Done. So I'll put them over there. So I'm going to do the front ones first. I can't do the rear ones today because I'm going to have to clamp them up with my G clamps uh, and keep them in a position whereby they're not going to move and it also keeps them nice and flat. And then tomorrow, obviously, I'll do the other side. So I think what I'll do is I'll get the main one down first, which is that one. I've already marked on each side, so I know exactly where they need to be placed. So I'll just turn that over. And I just want a very thin layer because I don't want it squidging out too much. There's no point because you're just going to waste it. Do it that way. 
make sure you get all the edges done as well so that's that one and this is what I like about this stuff it's it's got quite a long cure time so you don't have to rush it you can get it right first time you're not panicking that it's going off look at that quantity wise I've just got it right professional I wouldn't say that <laughs> we'll probably get dodgy comments now budget and budget right okay let's put that out of the way for a sec so we'll put that one on first like so and then we'll put that one I've numbered them so I get it right first time I don't get any glue anywhere and I can just slide them into position like so just make those look so much better don't they and then I'll use a little one for the middle how many clamps have I got? One, two, three, four. One down here. That's the device. Oh yeah, little one. Yeah. So put that one there. I've got a load of these at home where I've been doing the other that other one. I've got them at home. I put that one there. And then get that one there. That's it. I found that if you clamp over the joint they don't slide you can see that one's wanting to push its way out that way but they won't because i'm gonna sum out Stay like so. Then is that too far away? There we have it. Going nowhere. No, so I just make sure that it's not bowing anywhere, which it actually, it's just bowing on one side, which is, because these windows are not flat, better right so we'll leave those for now and the next bit is we need to now 
go over to here and we need to be able to connect those to the boat and because I haven't got any brackets to connect it to I'm going to have to make them so we need to transform a bit of this to make something like that there so basically the window imagine that being the inside of the boat and this being the outside of the boat the window will go in here and the angle of that is exactly the angle of where the window will sit like so and then I shall bolt it through where the original hole was and then that will then hold it so it won't go that way and nor will it go that way that's what I'm hoping anyway but we'll just we'll just see because ultimately on the edge of that I'm going to get some form of rubber seal from seal right where I'm going uh, where I'm getting the seals for the other windows for the boat uh, that will obviously make it weatherproof so then when the rain runs off it'll go around so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to find a piece of rubber that sort of molds its way around and underneath and then I can trap it and then it stops the rain from actually coming in so that's what's next I'm going to obviously make a few of these so that's it so stay tuned, we'll sort that out next. Right, we're on top of the boat again. I'm gonna try and explain this as best I can because I think it's useful for you to see what I'm up to in the way of doing what I'm doing down there because it's not easy trying to get the angles on things. Um, while you've not got the screen up here and it's quite fiddly to do um so i don't know whether john these it picks up my um masking tape line there yeah so it shows it sort of on a curve that m is a mirror image of that over there which is uh the screen that is um already at the correct angle so that's my template Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some brackets while this screen is off and the side screen is off. I'm going to make some brackets. I've already made one for the other uh, that side over there, which I'm waiting for it to set. So I'm making brackets like this, but obviously uh, make them slightly longer. So one is going to go roughly whether that picks that up. Yeah, so obviously it's going to be longer than this one, but you get the idea. So there's going to be one there. There's going to be one over here, like so. This one that I've made already is for there, on this side. What I'm thinking I'm going to do as a belt and braces scenario is I'm thinking of drilling a hole sort of in between where these two are and placing a, a third one on the front section of either side because if you just pan John on back onto these um, these two here these are the original ones and I'll be honest that alloy is so flimsy and bendy I personally think I'm going to chop as I've done with this windscreen I'm going to chop these off because I'm not happy with them. I think having new ones made, uh, I'll make some new ones uh, and do exactly the same. Put three, one in that original hole, that one in that original hole, but put one here as well. Uh, I think that'll be a lot stronger. And also, which I won't have mentioned to you, or I can't remember whether I mentioned to you, I have a spare piece of glass. Now, one of the windows where we remade it, I, uh, the glass was perfect. This is a Perspex one. And obviously at some point, the other one had broke and whoever had this boat prior to myself had put some Perspex in it. Uh, but one of the pieces of glass is really good. And I thought it might be a good idea if I use that and make a frame in the center 
and it will also double up as a bit of a strengthener as well. Obviously, I'll make a frame for it, but also it will act as a good strengthener for the window uh, whenever, when, this, uh, when the canopy gets put on. Plus, you can see through it and you don't really know it's there. So it acts as a, a double purpose, if want of a better word. So that's my thoughts in my head. Whether it'll come, uh, whether it'll come off or not, I don't know. But I'm willing to give it a bash because I've obviously got to connect this window to this window. Uh, and further down this episode, I don't know whether it might, it might actually get into the next episode because I'm sure this is going on and on and on. But there's an angle section that's going on this side and an angle section is going on uh, the side that I'm messing with at the moment. Okay. Right, so we're back down to uh, ground level again and we're making some brackets. So that is the metal that I'm using. It's an aluminium, but it's quite tough. Um, I've obviously started making them and that is my template giving the correct degree of angle that I need to make the brackets for this part here. So as you can see, they marry up quite nicely. They're not exact because once I get this window into position, then I can obviously adapt them according. But you can get the idea, that is how they're going to go. They cover up, I mean, this will all be painted, obviously, like the other side. Uh, you can see where I've ground off the old ones. And I'm going to basically put that in its place. They were really poor, those old brackets. Yeah, they were. They were real soft alloy. So that one is going on there, like so. I've drilled a pilot hole in, by the way, uh, which marry up with the holes. But it's only a small hole for now. So we can uh, drill them to the correct size. I don't know what bolt I'm going to use yet. Hence the reason why it's only a little pilot hole. So... As I mentioned on the top deck, that I want to belt and braces, so I want to put a third bracket in the middle. And I've cut a piece off while John went to get the batteries for the mic, and uh, we'll just bend that into position. All right. So, there we go. <laughs> right, so I'll just move, just shift that out of the way a minute. Now I am going to buy, before anybody starts saying how primitive is that what you're doing, but I am going to buy a metal bender uh, because I do need to bend. I don't know whether it picks it up, but there's a pencil line and there is some screw holes there. I need to bend that both that way and that way ever so slightly. And yes, I could borrow one. I could go somewhere and bend it, but it means me bending it slightly, coming back to the boat, checking it out. Uh, so I'm going to have to buy one, I think. I'm going to have to succumb to it. So I shall um, find one, no doubt, on eBay or wherever. So, yes. You do so, need some more tools in here. I do, you're right. So I shall bend this. So it won't, where I want to bend it, because it's just a vice, I can't get it to that line. I could do it there, but then I'm going to start skewing it and doing all sorts. So what I did, what I did with these here is I started it off from memory by placing a bit of alloy waste there. Like so. And then, close your ears, everybody. Okay, so bending it over. And now I can turn it over. So I can place that, that this side because it'll fit in the vise and that'll be a support for
or where I've bent it over. Like so. That's my template. So as you can see, I've still got a long way to go. So I'm gonna to have to go and stand there, John, I'm afraid. I know it's a primitive way of doing it, I know, but I actually, the, because this vice is obviously straight, I can visualize how, how I'm bending it over. I can see the gap between there and there. So I know I'm going down level, level-ish. So I'll just check my, so I've got a little bit more to go yet. be about right that's it so looks pretty good it's not exact because we need the windows in place but you can see that is about right so that's the third one done that goes there that goes there and that goes there Voila, hopefully that's gonna be a sturdy job. Only three more to do. You don't need to see it, I'll just make it. See you later. Right, so, these take so long to do, but it's well worth it. At first, I was going to do, as you know, do a bracket like that. And I thought, well, if it's belt and braces, can I improve on that? And also I've got to bear in mind that let's say we're chugging her down the canal and we get to a low bridge, which we won't on the Lancaster, because I know for a fact that this boat will go up and down the Lancaster. But let's say we decide to go further, Jay. Yep. Further Preston down to London, for example. We don't know how low those bridges are. What? Up to Scotland. Up to, yeah, you can't get up the canal to Scotland. But we can stick it on a low loader and take it up to a thing. Right. But I'm on about, at the moment, these... We've got to also bear in mind that if we come across a bridge which is too low, then we're going to have to take them apart. Now, taking apart and having them really strong and in place, we've got to get that right. So, I've come up with something else. A sandwich. So, I'm thinking that sandwiched on, like so, bolted through the one hole, that is going to be even better. Because it means that we can unbolt it and take that window, because everything else will be bolted together. So at least we could do that. I know some boats have got uh, hinges where you can do it that way, but I prefer to have it this way because the last thing I want is in winter to go one day and find that my canopy's blown off, my boat's flooded and everything's all gone to pot. I want to make sure that everything is fixed solid. And I think that, well, I'm going to try it. And I think that'll work. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make some more brackets <laughs> to go together. But I think that, with maybe a rubber gasket, I think that'll work really well. Just thought I'd show you. I'll carry on.
Right, so we're on the top deck and we're going to test fit these two uh, uh, and also that one there to see whether what I thought was uh, is going to work. And what I've done with this particular one is I've elongated the hole because I'm going to uh, put a gasket on this inner lip here and on this inner lip here. You'll get the gist in the probably the next episode when we get that far. But at this stage, I just want to test fit to see whether this theory of mine of this particular way I'm wanting to do it actually works. So that's what I'm going to do now. So they're going to go there. I'm just going to put that, put a washer on it for a minute. These aren't exact in size because I've yet to decide uh, what length I'm going to go with because I may put a butterfly type of a screw system underneath because if we ever do get to, and I don't think this is the case on where we're going to put the boat, but if we ever get to a, a place where the, uh, there's a bridge that's really low, then of course I'm going to have to be able to take, take this off in order to go underneath the bridge. So this is the theory behind doing what I'm doing. So I'm just going to connect, push that through there and just screw. I think I can get underneath. Yes, I can. So because I've put a hole in, elongated the hole, it gives me that flexibility to adjust it. It is a bit loose, but we'll give it a go. Right, let's see if this baby fits. Goes in there. not hey that's not bad now I know that's this further, further this way but that's only because that piece of wood is in the way but this angle I think is about right uh, obviously I'll check it against everything else when we put the uh, side pieces on but I think that's holding its own there that's only loose and it's holding its own and what i'm going to do is this piece of rubber i ordered off ebay i'll give you the description of it when we get to the episode where i'm going to use this stuff uh it's like a gasket and a and a sort of a weather shield for the front so then the rain can slide off uh, i'm going to use this on the inside of here to protect the uh, to protect the framework of the, uh, these uh, windows. I mean, obviously it's got to all be painted again, so that's, you know, we're at the early stages, but aesthetically the test fit on that, Jay, isn't bad, is it? It's pretty good actually. Yeah. Better than you could have hoped for, I think. I think so too. And it looks actually, I know you can't see from where you are, but it actually looks quite neat from this side. And when it's all painted the same, it'll look pretty good. So what I've got to do now, now that I'm happy with those uh, brackets, um, I've got to make that hole, elongate that hole on that top bracket there. I've got to yet make uh, at least three on that side. Uh, I've already started the one on this side, on this side window. They're all relatively gonna be similar in, in shape and size. And you will see that in the next episode because You've got the gist of what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, and then once it's all done, you'll get to see it in the next episode, which will be episode 31. Am I right? Yeah. Episode 31. Right. So you know where we're at. You know what I've got to do. I'm going to sort the rest of those brackets out. And the next time you see those windows, they will be 90% fixed into position. They won't be painted, but they will be fixed and you'll get a gist of what I've been trying to do 
for seems like decades. So I think on that note, it's time to put this episode, and it's been a long one, long-winded, but I am a bit rusty, to bed. So, a few thank yous need to be done. I know John has kindly put them in uh, in the uh, episode, uh, but I need to personally say a few thank yous. First of all, Warings. Warings who owns all this site, and I rent this building off them. I need to thank Andrew, Andrew Waring. I need to thank the Yellow Jackets that you saw in this episode, Russell and Dilly, for what they did. Answers in the comments, if you still are not sure of what I'm doing with why they were here in the first place, that would be good. I'd like to also thank you for having the patience to wait 18 months for this episode. I, I do appreciate it. Yes, it has been long-winded. Unfortunately, you know, I did get the Kung flu and I was out of action for a long time. That was unfortunate, but you know, I wasn't the only one that everybody else, of course, suffered with it. Uh, but that's by the by, I'm here. John, I'm appreciated to him because he's obviously had to wait for me. And actually that thumbs up gives me another thing. And that is, in fact, I might sit down. Since we, since we started, we're up to about a thousand uh, subs subscribers. In fact, I think we're about eleven hundred or something like that. Now, since we passed that eleven, since we passed that thousand, we're in a position where we can be monetized. Now, I funded this for four years, and obviously, I pay rent and I do everything. And I'm going to put out a begging bowl. But it's not a begging bowl asking for money. I'm not going to do that. What I'm asking for is the thumbs up. Because I didn't realise that now that you're monetized, the thumbs up does count for a lot. And for every click that you do in the way of a thumbs up, I don't know whether it's a thumbs down that happens as well. But you know what? If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fair enough. But I think if you can give me a thumbs up, I would be eternally grateful. It will help me and it will help the channel as well. So I'd like to ask for your help on that side of things. And here's why I think you should do it. A couple of weeks ago, I got a, through YouTube, I got somebody who liked and subscribed to me and then they did the lottery and they won. Now, I don't think they won the, the full amount. They won something. Now I'm not saying that the both are connected, but can you afford not to? If you're gonna do the lottery, give me a thumbs up. I'll leave that with you. And on that bombshell, I'll see you in episode 31. Bye for now.